Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In this class, we discuss everything social science research from understanding the research discipline, research philosophy, the elements of scientific research, and the methodologies of conducting research. In research methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to our class today where we are going to discuss the steps that we follow when we are conducting literature review. In our previous lesson, we have started discussing chapter 2 of the research proposal. Remember, from lesson 51, we discussed chapter 1 and we went through all the 12 sections in chapter 1 of the research proposal. And the whole of chapter 1 is called introduction because it aims to introduce the reader to your phenomena or it aims to introduce your reader to your problem. That is why it is called an introduction. Chapter 2 is called literature review. In our previous lesson, we have explained the meaning of literature review we have discussed the purpose of literature review and the scope of literature review. So today's lesson, we are continuing with discussion of literature review and we are going to discuss the sources of literature review, the steps followed when conducting literature review, and finally, the common online databases that a social science research may search literature or data from. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to state the sources of literature review, explain the steps followed when conducting literature review, and identify the common online databases that a social science researcher may search literature from. Before we delve into the lesson, let us remind ourselves the sections of chapter 2 of the research proposal. In chapter 1, remember we were able to state at least 12 subsections which started from background to the problem, statement of the problem, all the way up to the last one which is organization of the study. But we said with chapter 2, we may not list distinct sections like we did in chapter 1 because the way your institution requires you to review literature may differ from one institution to the other, even your discipline. Mm. Secondly, the way the researcher will organize their literature may differ from mm. one researcher to the other. However, there are common sections mm. in chapter 2 but they may also differ from one discipline to the other. The first one is an introduction. Now, this section introduces the chapter to the reader. So in this section, which is normally a small section, maybe a paragraph or so, only tells the reader what to expect in the sections that you follow. Then from 2.2, the researcher reviews both empirical and conceptual literature as per the subject matter of his or her study. And then 
after they have reviewed then they come up with a theoretical framework and also conceptual framework and finally they summarize the literature review where they are able to identify the gaps now please note there are some institutions that require the theoretical framework and conceptual framework to be in chapter one so based on where the two sections are put in this lecture we are going to discuss the two as part of chapter two but it does not mean that you cannot use the knowledge you are going to discuss wherever they are supposed to be inserted in your discipline so having said that we are going to start with the sources of literature and we mainly have three sources of literature the first one is the primary sources and this is literature from journal articles government reports theses and dissertations and survey reports then we have secondary sources for instance reviewed articles and books then we have tertiary sources for instance encyclopedias dictionaries and bibliographies now what is the difference between the three and where should you begin your search primary sources are the ones that are written by the person who developed the literature it is thus original research and it is mostly found in published literature from data that has been collected from the field and analyzed so you find that the primary sources for instance theses and dissertations this is original work that has been done by the researcher if you are talking about government reports these are original work which is coming from the government then when you look at secondary sources this ones evaluates reviews and synthesizes primary literature secondary sources are much broader and they are less current than primary sources then with the tertiary resources they help a researcher to get a general overview of a subject for instance the bibliography will help you identify people who have written an area like what you want to research on so it gives you a general overview of your subject matter so as you conduct your literature you should read more or review more of the primary sources than the other two because the primary sources is the original work done by the person from whom you are reviewing their literature now how does the researcher track down the relevant sources to be reviewed remember if you get into a library if you get to the online searches there are millions and millions of documents and literature that you may be relevant to you or that may be talking about or having been written about your subject matter how do you determine that particular literature that you are going to use in your study because you cannot read all the literature that is in the library or online you have to identify the sources that you are going to use in your work now the following are the steps that will guide you as you go through the search while conducting literature review the first step is to make an outline of the literature review and this outline is made by identifying about four to six words which capture the essence of the subject matter the researcher wishes to investigate so this means that when you look at the subject matter meaning the problem of your research what is it that you want to study for instance imagine you want to study factors influencing sustainability of community projects which are these factors that you may want to study probably you want to study capacity building resource mobilization you want to study how uh, community participation also influences sustainability now this are the keywords that you are going to identify so that when you go to online search or to the library you will be looking at literature that is relevant to 
capacity building and its influence on sustainability. So these words help you to locate the relevant materials to review in the library. Now with the keywords, you now start making searches either in a physical library or online. With online, you use computer databases of literature, which we are going to look at a few that you can use in social science. You can also use bibliographies. We had mentioned this earlier. Bibliographies offers a list of published sources on a topic. And this may be available physically in a library or online. Another search that you can do is the use of references in books and articles. When you read a journal article, the author normally lists the references they have also referred as they developed their paper or as they wrote their book. So this is also a very good source. It helps you determine what has been written and by whom in your area. So the references that have been quoted while a person is developing or writing or publishing a book or an article provides a good indicator of the significant works in the area under investigation. So once you have gone to the searches, search first for journal articles before you move to the books. Because we have said general articles are original research. And of course, based on the context, you may start by locating about 50 articles. When you are searching these articles, remember the following. Make sure the general articles and books are relevant to your study and they will make a contribution to your review. That is very key. Number two, Use articles and books that show substantial agreement and those that seem to present conflicting conclusions. Because that is the way you'll be able to identify your voice or to put your voice in that literature so that you grow the body of knowledge. When you have literature that is in agreement with what you have done and others that are conflicting, that helps you to define and refine the existing knowledge in the problem area. So we have now discussed step three, where now you go and start searching. And we have said first with the journal articles before you move to the books. And these journal articles must be current. And by current, we mean in social science, unless you are dealing with a classical material, the journal article or the book should not be more than 10 years old. And then step four is to draft summaries of the studies you have read or reviewed. And how do you draft the summaries? It is by describing the key themes and issues that are running throughout the research work. So as you read that article, start summarizing the study. And we are going to look at how you summarize. Then step five, add your review with a summary of the major themes and suggest how your study further adds to the literature. Now, do not confuse step three and step four. Step three means that there are key themes and they may be more than two or three in a paper, for instance. But then when you go to step five, you are identifying the major theme that is relevant to your study. And when you are uh, summarizing the major themes, you make sure that you compare and contrast the work so that you arrive at conclusions that build the body of knowledge. We have mentioned that. So do not go to the literature that is only in agreement with what you are working on. You should look at literature that both conflicts and also compares with your study. Now, how do you write a summary of the major themes? And this is what will help you come up with the last section of literature review that is called summary of literature review or summary of gaps identified based on how you do it in your discipline. A good summary should provide the whole picture of the study being reviewed and it should highlight the problem, 
that that person is investigating or has investigated the central focus or purpose of the study the population the sample and how the subjects were selected the key results or key findings that relate to your study and then the technical and methodological gaps in that study and these are the ones that will now help you to bring in your voice so that those gaps are what you will use to grow the body of knowledge it is important to note that effective research is based on past knowledge therefore when you conduct thorough literature review it helps you to eliminate the duplication of what has been done i hear many students saying that literature review is the easiest because it is like copying and pasting now that is not how literature review is done literature review when you are evaluating other literature you are bringing in your voice so that you can grow the body of knowledge another important point to note is that a summary of the writings of recognized authorities and of previous research provides evidence that the researcher is familiar with what is already known for instance if you are in education as a discipline you should know the people other authors who write on education matters if you are in engineering you should be able to know the other people who write on engineering so that's what we are saying when you do literature review it provides an evidence that you are familiar with others who have written based on your discipline another important point is that do not forget to capture the reference as precise as possible based on the reference style that you use in your discipline for social science we normally use apa and we'll be discussing that in our coming lectures but this point is very key when you read a particular literature or when you now review literature and you have written the summary do not forget to capture the reference because that is what will come in the list of references at the end of your work as you complete your proposal and it will still be there when you write your final thesis or your final project so anytime you read a book a journal article remember to always capture the reference based on the style of references that you use in your discipline finally we look at common online databases that are applicable or that a social science researcher may search literature from now this are the first common one which has a lot of material is eric and i have provided the link then we have google scholar we have academia we have proquest we have sociological abstracts and we have ssci social sciences citation index so if you pick these links they will help you to search for materials that are current and materials that are relevant to your area of study please note when you are using these databases ensure that the journal article or the text that you uh, read is complete there are some that will only provide the abstract and that does not give you the full picture so use databases that provide access to full text copies of the articles number two start with the most recent issue of the articles then work backwards and we when you're working backwards in time you are going to those that are not more than 10 years old then three use the references quoted as follow up materials that you need to examine that is the references that have been quoted in that journal article becomes a follow up materials that you can use to examine now that brings us to the end of this lesson in this lesson we have stated the three sources of literature review discussed the five steps that you follow when conducting literature review and finally we have listed the common online databases that are applicable in social science research in our next lesson we are going to discuss the theoretical framework 
But before then, make sure you visit the researchmethodsclass.com website where you can watch the full research methods course. You can also access other courses on SPSS and M&D consultancy. You are also able to book for consultation and you can also buy the research methods ebook. So see you in our next lesson as we talk about the theoretical framework.